Football is one of the most popular sports in America, and it's also the leading cause of sports-related injuries. During the 2005-2006 season, high school football players sustained more than a half a million injuries nationally. And 13-year-old Zachary Lystead was one of them. But Zach's tragedy has inspired the biggest positive change in the way football is now played in America, with Washington's governor, Chris Gregoire, signing into law the new Zachary Lystead Law. And now Zach's courageous story and his continuing struggle to recover is receiving widespread recognition and admiration across America and even in the NFL. Zachary Lystead deserves it. It's been a heck of a long road to recovery for the teenager. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Almost two years ago, Zachary suffered two vicious hits and a severe concussion during his middle school football game. His coaches thought he was fine and they sent him back in the game. But as soon as the final whistle blew, Zachary collapsed. He rehabs every day. Before he was running touchdowns and was tackling kids and hitting long balls. And, and now we're just really wanting him to watch. Again. But out of Zachary's misfortune comes hope. First, Governor Gregoire signed the Zachary Lystead bill into law, forcing all young athletes in the state who suffer head injuries to get a doctor's permission before playing again. And now, Harborview Medical Center and the University of Washington are opening this sports concussion clinic. Since his injury, all Zachary's ever wanted was to help other kids just like him. But during this ribbon cutting ceremony, we also couldn't help notice how Zachary has inspired everyone else, from the governor. Well, he's touched my heart in a very, very big way. To Adrian Galtz, another football player who ironically suffered the exact same injury as Zachary. I can see my son walking and going by, and you're going to do the same, right? Adrian and his mom drove all the way from Squim to meet him. I've been wanting to meet you for the last couple of years now, and I finally get to do it. I'm, I'm just glad to see everything's going all right for you. According to the Center for Disease Control, among middle and high school sports, football is responsible for the most injuries per player. More than 300,000 sports and recreation-related traumatic brain injuries occur in the United States every year. And at least 50 football players in high school and middle school in more than 20 states have been killed or sustained serious head injuries on the football field. For every 1,000 athletic exposures, football players receive 4.36 injuries, the study found. That puts football head and shoulders above the second place sport, wrestling, which showed only two and a half injuries per 1,000 exposures. That's troubling because young brains are particularly susceptible to second impact syndrome, a catastrophic swelling of the brain that can happen when a player sustains a second blow to the head before the first has even healed. Administrators, trainers, and coaches play key roles in preventing concussions. Managing them correctly can prevent serious and permanent injuries such as those suffered by Zach. The standard of care required that Zach be removed from play when he was initially injured. Today the Insider Exclusive goes behind the headlines to tell the courageous story of Zachary Lystead and how his lawyer, Mike Nelson, partner at the law firm of Nelson, Langer, and Engel, not only got justice for Zach, but with the amazing love, respect, and determination of Zach's parents, Victor and Mercedes, the leadership of Washington's governor, Chris Gregoire, Seattle's Harborview Medical Center, the NFL, Mike, and many others, a new law was enacted named in honor of Zach, the Zachary Lystead Law. On May 14, 2009, Governor Christine Gregoire signed into law the nation's toughest youth athlete return to play law, which is the most comprehensive return to play law in the United States for athletes under 18. Legislators and trial lawyers alike work relentlessly to get justice for the people. And in Mike Nelson's case, the passage of this new law has earned him the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as one of the best people's trial lawyers in Washington and in the nation. He has seen many innocent and hardworking people suffer needless injury. And because of that, he's driven to help people who have been harmed by the negligent actions of others. His goal, 
not only to get justice for Zach, but to make sure that all young football players everywhere play in the safest environments possible. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy, and this is the Insider Exclusive, live from Seattle, Washington, at the law firm of Nelson, Langer, and Ingle. It is my great pleasure to introduce Mike Nelson to the show. Welcome to the show, Mike. Good morning, Steve. Tell us a little bit about your firm and what you, what kind of people you primarily represent. The firm represents primarily people that have suffered traumatic brain injury. It's been my interest well now for over 30 years. And speaking of traumatic brain injury, we have a case today that we're going to be talking about in depth. Please discuss it. That's the Zachary Leistead case. Zachary is an excellent example of why we all have to take brain injury seriously. He had a relatively minor concussion in the first half of a game. They pulled him from the game for three plays. 13-year-old. 13-year-old. Star athlete. Good student. Come the second half of the game, they returned him to play. Come the end of the game, he was catastrophically injured. He literally went out and won that game. Mm -hmm. But as they were given the high fives at the end of the game, he collapsed and scream that he was going blind. Right. This is an example when someone suffers a concussion in the past and in some areas still today, they put that player back in to the game and that's where the damage starts happening. That's it? where the damage happens. It's called second impact syndrome and it happens because you're sending a player back into the game that still is symptomatic, still have problems, the brain hasn't had an opportunity to recover. For the immature brain, Adolescents up to about 22 or 23 years old, they're more susceptible to the second impact syndrome. Mm -hmm. But even for those players that don't suffer a, a second impact syndrome, having a concussion layered on top of a prior concussion when they haven't healed means that the ramifications and implications are going to be worse. Right. As you've been talking, we've been showing a timeline chart, which your firm put together. Correct. Showing when he was injured. I think he was injured right before the end of the first half. Right before the end of the third, uh, first half. So he was out what, three plays or something three like plays. that. And then the intermission. And then the halftime. Then the halftime. And then he went back in and he suffered a couple of more. And he suffered a number of hits in the second half of the game. Right. Um, we have some charts which are going to be showing also of the damage that was done to his brain. And as they're being shown, explain exactly what happened. What happened in Zachary's instance, and happens in all second impact syndromes, is that some second impact, it doesn't even have to be a substantial one, while the brain is still trying to recover, causes the brain to lose its ability to auto-regulate the flow of fluids in and the flow of fluids out of the brain. Mm -hmm. And literally, it massively swells. Sometimes there's a subdural involved, sometimes not. The culprit is the swelling. And Oftentimes, the result is death, or it can be catastrophic injury. Now, Zach was in a coma for four months, was it? Uh, four months. Tell our audience the legal strategy you pursued to settle this case, because you did settle it, correct? The legal strategy was primarily involved with showing that Zach's injury is preventable. We've known literally for well over a decade actually in Washington State for several decades that the young brain is vulnerable to re-injury when you've had a concussion. Mm. The simple remedy, and it's been articulated well, particularly in Washington, but now across the country, is remove the player. If you have any sense that there's a concussion or a head injury, there's no reason to have that player in the game. Mm. Remove them from the game, monitor them, if necessary, send them for medical treatment, number one. Number two, before they go back to play or practice, make sure that there's a medical release by somebody. From a doctor. From a doctor or somebody else that's trained in concussion management and evaluation. Doesn't necessarily have to be the doctor. Most of the times it is going to be a doctor before they return to play. And there's something magic. If you go back over the decades of experience American medicine has, for whatever reason, whoever is looking at the child has been able to tell that they shouldn't go back into play and they withhold them. And if there's a doctor examining 
or a licensed healthcare professional with experience examining the individual, you don't have second impact syndrome. Mm -hmm. It just plain doesn't happen because they, they hold them. It's a simple, almost 100% remedy. As a result of his injuries, a new law was passed in this state, correct? Yes, it's called yes. the Zachary Leistead Law. Mm -hmm. One, it, maintain, it mandates education. Two, there's a bright line. If a player has a suspected concussion or head injury, they're to be pulled from the game or practice. Mm -hmm. Three, before they can return to play, they have to have approval from a licensed health care provider with expertise or background in concussion. Today, we're very fortunate to have uh, Zach's dad here with us. And so I want to bring him on with you so we can discuss more in depth that law and everything he's done on behalf of his son as well as the, as the game of football. It is my great pleasure to introduce Zach's dad, Victor, to the show. Welcome to the show, Victor. Thank you for having me. Take us back to the day when Zach was injured. The first hit, I didn't actually see him um, down. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, there was a boy down on the field. Um, I didn't know what boy it was. There was a boy that was running in uh, um, for, for a touchdown. Zach uh, evidently got him um, right, right as he was crossing goal line. Um, and um, there was, you know, a timeout on the field, and I really didn't see it happen. Um, and then I, I heard my son's name. Uh, you know, hey, everyone take a knee. Zach's hurt. Zach's down. And um, so, of course, you get concerned immediately. Sure. And then third quarter started, and Zach was immediately back on the field. Um, he played both offense, defense, kickoff, and punt returns. He, he played every down. Immediately after the game, something was wrong. They'd finished, and, and I started walking out, and uh, they needed to high-five one another. And so they were lined up, and, and I could see he started shaking his head. And uh, I was like, what's going on, man? And he's like, oh, Dad, my head hurts. It hurts. And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. At that time, he'd walked away, and, and um, they made their high-fives. He did his turn and came back. By, by the time he was coming back, he was shaking his head a lot. And, um, and that's when I approached him, like, dude, what's up, man? You know, what, what's going on? And he's like, my head, Dad, and it hurts. It hurts really bad. And, um, and then it started getting a lot worse where he started stumbling. Um, one of the other players' dads noticed, ran out, um, and he was holding on to Zach's arm, and I was holding on to his other arm. And, and um, he was saying, you know, Daddy, my, my head, it hurts. It hurts really bad, Dad. Don't set me down. I'm like, dude, you need to sit down. He's like, no, don't set me down. My head, it, it hurts. Dad, oh, God, it hurts really bad. And then, um, you know, God, it got... He got to the point where um, he, he said, Daddy, I can't see, and then he, he went down. And um, as a result of the injuries that he suffered, and we're going to have him on the show in a bit, he has had traumatic brain injury uh, that is basically he's recovering pretty well, very major significantly, but he is still in a situation where he's very dependent upon you and um, your wife, et cetera, for his basic uh, needs, right? Zachary, you know, at the beginning of his injury, um, the biggest thing we had to do was focus on him living. Yeah. Right? So he was on life support for seven days. Um, and as the timeline goes, um, Zach couldn't move anything purposefully for about 13 months. Mm-hmm. Um, he said his first word on the ninth month after injury. So things have been really slow when it comes to coming, getting any kind of normality back. Yeah. Um, on our third year, we started getting the right leg. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so we keep focusing on his mobility, focusing on his cognitive ability. Um, but he needs 100% care from, from my wife and I. Yeah. And, um, you know, she is his 100% caregiver. Um, so it, it, it takes a lot for, for um, him getting dressed or, right. or him you know, doing anything at, at all. Mike, being a lawyer and looking for significant permanent change, how, our audience is probably wondering, how do you go about that? You handle the case, and then what else do you do? 
you develop the coalitions of people that are concerned about young athletes and their safety. Uh, and that's an easy issue, I think, to take to Olympia, to take to the state capitol. You had and a receptive ear with the governor, too, right? Yes. Uh, and the leaders of the Senate and the House of mm -hmm. both parties. And I have to admit, uh, Zachary and his father were down in Olympia, yeah. and they opened a lot of doors. We have your son here today, so we're going to bring him on right now. It is my great pleasure to introduce Zach and his dad to the show. Welcome to the show, guys. Hi, Dad. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Good. So tell us, your dad's been telling us a lot about your recovery, and it's almost miraculous in a way. Tell us a little bit about the, the struggle that you've had over the last few years. Uh, well, staying alive was a struggle. Uh, I don't really remember that. I I could just remember seeing a light and everything, uh, and then the light told me to come back, and uh, now here I am. Before the show, I saw you walking. Oh yeah. Amazingly so, because yeah. Dr. Herring said that that would have never happened, right, Victor? He's amazed. You know, Zach's. Uh, you know, I I think you know it took a long time to put him down. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if his bleed started in the second quarter or whenever it started uh, in that game, um, it took to the end of the game for it to, you know, incapacitate my son. And so that's how we kind of say it too. Most, most other people would have felt the effect or whatever and yeah. been done. And Zach, uh, you know, it took a long time for him to go down and it's taken a long time for him to come back. I mean, it's kind of weird that I think of it that way, but, you know, he just keeps on. He just keeps on making progress. What's your daily schedule like? Oh, really uh, busy. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, what they do you want? <laughs> well, what do you normally do? Uh, I usually go to school and then I go to therapy. Mm -hmm. Whether it be pushing boundaries or whether it be swimming or the University of Washington, uh, everything. He averages about you know, between 35, 40 hours of therapy a given week. Wow. And then, uh, you know, just everything that we do, we kind of encompass it with a therapeutic kind of approach. Mm -hmm. You know, make him do more on his own when, when he's been able to do more on his own. Mm -hmm. The first couple of years was all about just kind of getting, system, you know, getting him to learn how to eat again. It took him 20 months for the feeding tube to come out. and. And now he, he likes to eat, uh, likes to eat, likes to argue. What's your uh, favorite food? Um, I like seafood a lot, um, but I don't really know. Uh, who do you like to argue with? My dad. <laughs> <laughs> and who wins the arguments? Uh, I'd say it's about 75%, maybe 75%. <laughs> so. That's what you keep thinking. What do you think about your, the new law that was named in, uh, in, uh, in honor uh, of you and what uh, it's doing for other kids? I feel honored, but at the same time, I know I have to get better to uh, um, make it go nationwide. Yeah. People think before they put people back into the game now. Yeah. I think that's like the biggest change I've seen. Well, you are making remarkable progress. And yeah. I want to thank both of you for coming on the show today. And we Thanks wish for you, having us. We wish you the best. It is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Stan Herring, who worked very closely with Zach after his injury. Welcome to the show, Stan. Thank you. Great to be here. You work at Harborview Medical Center. It's one of the places you work, right? Yes, I do. Um, as a result of Zach's injuries, what has your medical center now implemented, new programs, et cetera? Because of Zach's injury and the legislation that followed, the Seattle Sports Concussion Program was born, and that is at my facility at Harborview Medical Center and also at Children's Hospital in Seattle. We promised the governor that if she would pass the law that we would have a program a sports concussion program open to any youth athlete who was concussed. And while we had been taking care of concussed athletes for a long time, mm -hmm. after the law passed, the formal opening of the Seattle Sports Concussion Program, a direct result of Zach's law. 
And what do you what do you do in this program exactly? Any youth or young adult athlete who suffered a sports concussion, from the most minor to the more severe, is welcome to be seen. We have a multidisciplinary team, mm -hmm. evaluation, management, return to play. Mm -hmm. And this has helped a lot of kids, I guess. Already, I've uh, seen a whole lot of young athletes uh, from locally, regionally, around the state and out right. of state who need help What's, in managing their sports concussions. As a part of this program also, you have some, some part of it where you show people how to prevent these injuries too, correct? A lot of our program is outreach, speaking to parents, athletes, coaches, administrators, other health care providers about understanding who may be concussed and what to do to help prevent the tragedies that can be associated with it. Well, I want to thank you very much for being on the program. Keep up the good work. Mike, what a remarkable client you have, both Victor as well as Zach. They've, they've been absolutely wonderful and have really led the cause nationally for return to play safety. Yeah, and that's kind of like the ultimate dream of any case, isn't it? If the case, if the case you prosecute and represent the people turns into a law which changes society for the better, that's really the ultimate, isn't it? It's one of the most satisfying experiences I've had as a trial attorney. This has been a remarkable interview and a remarkable show, and I'm so glad that you were able to have Zach and his dad come here and talk about this because in America today, more and more states are enacting the law that Zach's new law is based on. And I want to thank you very much for being on the program. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at InsiderExclusive.com. 